Hello. I didn't see you. Good morning. Scott Hanselman. <laughs> I'm, I'm Hello, Scott Hanselman. Here. Thank you. You're on your live, too, by the way. Great. Yeah, that's great. I'm talking to you. I had a guy come into Azure Friday today with mutton chops. So it was the beard and mutton chops day. And he had like, this amazing, like, angry Scottish guy with mutton chops. It was good. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're live, and we're hanging out here on campus, and we're using the little pan tilt zoom action there. And, and you're frantically setting up demos, I can see. Yep. Um, who wants to, uh, here, Richard, why don't we do like a from, the, from left to right kind of a thing? From, from the heart? Here, I will hold this microphone up. Always. Fun. Can they hear us OK? Can you check with the tweets in the future? Sure. Can you hear us OK, people? Because uh, we're just learning how to use this thing. Uh, hi. How we roll here. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, hi, my name is Rich Lander. Uh, I'm a program manager on the .NET team, and uh, we're here today to talk about um, uh, releasing Core CLR uh, onto GitHub as open source. Cool. We never had the .NET team. No. Um, yeah. So, so can we, can we yeah. So it? it's it's actually never been this good. <laughs> Lower your expectations now. No, so we go around the room and we, yeah, that's what guys. we're going to do. We do that. Yeah, that's a, that was the plan. But yeah. Yes. Yes. We, we are the core dynamics. This is our small lavalier mic. I usually have this pinned to my shirt. Yeah. But, uh, um, I'm Alex Gionda. I'm a developer of the .NET team. Uh, I'm Jan Kautas. I'm a developer on the .NET team, CLA. I'm Garo Kanna. I'm a dev lead on the CLA team. And this is my boss who hovers over me because he doesn't trust me to do anything right. What do you guys work on? I just said. I know. They but, said not .NET. That's not like enough. Which okay, what specifically yeah. did you do? How long have you been with that team? Uh, eight years. Eighty years. Eighty years. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's Redmond time. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you are a lifer. Yes. Okay, so eight years. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have worked on uh, different parts. Uh, exception handling being one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Of late, I've been working on uh, the core CLR. Uh, uh, assembly loader and binder that is used by ASP.NET uh, v5, vnet. Yeah, cool. So I have been on um, the CR team for like 14 years. <laughs> 14 yeah. years. And this is actually the third time I'm doing you know, cross-platform CLR. So <laughs> I hope this one it will finally stick. You know, since oh, it's, it's open, open source, source it now. To <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been in the team for about a couple of years. Um, I worked in the um, other side of things. I worked on um, the back and pad um, or story for back and pad. Can you make sure that changes don't break compatibility? So you work on the big DLL. <laughs> one DLL. Okay, one DLL. So we did. We went on stage in in New York a while back, and we announced a bunch of stuff. But we kind of announced the intent to do a bunch of stuff. What did we actually do this morning? Uh, well, just just some. Uh, by the way, I've been on the team for 12 years. Um, but uh, back in um, November, we announced uh, we created the CoreFX repo on GitHub, and there were um, approximately four libraries in there. Since then, we've released what, like 20 more or something like that. Um, and uh, we've got about 500,000 lines of code in the core effects repo, hopefully growing to about 2 million by the time we're done. Today, we announced um, the, yeah, so that was all libraries. Today, we announced um, the actual .NET Core runtime, which is actually the execution engine that runs managed code for um, ASP.NET 5 apps and uh, console apps and potentially other app types that other people could build on top of .NET Core in the future. Is it like the jitter and the garbage collector and all those bits? It's like the jitter and the garbage collector and all those bits. And this is not source opened? No, this is not source open. This is the real thing. So it's MIT license. Uh, it's the exact same license that we used for CoreFX. Uh, so it's actually quite liberal. Um, and you can go um, take the code today, Go modify it to your heart's content, do anything you want with it, and not ever give it back to us, and that's okay. Certainly, you can give it back to us, too. So to, to say that even more specifically, <laughs> I could clone this, fork it, make the Hansel CLR, yes. and deploy it with my ASP.NET application. And charge $1 million per $1 copy. $1 million. Yeah. So this is the entire stack from, I mean, the entire stack to run an ASP.NET app. Five, yeah. This is the entire code. Right. This is... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the core set of uh, 
runtime libraries and files. So um, when you say big, I just want to qualify because the entire stack comprises of like CLR. Yeah. It comprises of uh, MS Core Lab, which Alex works on, and then it comprises of framework libraries that live over MS Core Lab, mm -hmm. and of course ASP.NET uh, framework libraries. So this is the CLR DLL mm -hmm. and uh, MS Core DAC, DBI, things which enable managed debugging in VS and so on, mm -hmm. and MS Core Lab. So right now, when I go into the CTP of Visual Studio 2015, and I say, found a project, core CLR, blah, 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 and I have an ASP.NET Hello World application, and I look in there, there's a NuGet package that says core CLR, and there's stuff in there. I think uh, right now, and uh, I could be a little out of date here, but I, right now there is an ASP.NET KRE package, yeah. right. which contains uh, everything comprising the next version of ASP.NET, uh, including uh, binaries as is right now. And it's those things. It is those things. Yeah. These things are part of that thing. Okay, the entire cool. stack is that thing, actually. Yeah. I'd just like to say one other thing on the more meta side of things, which is, um, so as we were working on these projects, um, we were looking around. At, so obviously Microsoft's a, a large company, mm -hmm. and um, we were looking at what some other large companies have done with open sourcing of various platforms and um, seeing if there were patterns that we either wanted to follow or anti-patterns that we wanted to avoid. And so one thing we did notice that there are some companies that um, have holdbacks on core technology or maybe they have some code that's like, they keep the code that's new and it's like two years out of date. Mm -hmm. And so we actually didn't do any of those things. So the code that we open sourced is like fresh. It's like exactly the code that developers are using within Microsoft. And um, we didn't hold anything back. We gave, we, we made everything available. So that means tomorrow when they get to work, they're going to keep working in public on this thing. Yes. Okay. So and this isn't a mirror repo. This is... Well, is it, it, it is actually a mirror repo, but it's um, the latency is in the level of minutes. Why is it a mirror repo? I'll let them speak to that. <laughs> right, we, we still, so one of our goals was uh, to keep the core CLR in sync with the .NET framework, that, you know, the big .NET framework. Uh -huh. And, you know, the .NET, the big .NET framework uh, is like, hosted in TFS and you know we have a lot of internal infrastructure uh, around it so we did you know it wouldn't be kind of meaningful for us to move it somewhere else mm. but at the same time we wanted to all the changes to uh, flow smoothly between the two so also oh, it's two way so when pull yeah. requests yeah. come yeah. in so yeah. hopefully pull requests either have already happened today or will yeah. happen yeah. yeah they have They're right. oh you already had some PRs today yeah. 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 Seriously, yeah. they're back. And you've already approved PRs from today. Yeah. Yes, that's and they're back can you, in our tree. Can you talk about well. pull requests we've got? Anything cool? An Are they just like misspellings oh. or anything awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Ours were all formatting our. They, they're they're just starting page. to come up. Don't uh, go and run yeah. ReSharper and uh, call it a pull request. We actually get one cool, yes. cool pull request that we approved was a fix for, for Linux build break or certain yeah. versions okay. of Ubuntu. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's uh, not bad. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the goal here. In the, 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 the goal, the dream, is random person who doesn't work for Microsoft goes git clone, doc configure, cmake, and they have a real CLR. Can you do that? Is that actually uh, real? Core CLR. Core CLR, rather. Core CLR. Yeah. Core CLR. Can, I, can I share your screen now? You want? Um, sure. Um, so I, I have a question before we switch to screens. Um, okay. Is any of the Linux port inside of the stuff you guys open source today? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. In yeah. Fact, if, uh, yeah, you know the Linux part is there, and it's something we are actively working on. So you can see the, all the check-ins that are happening as we make them. Uh, and what works? Because I know that the goal wasn't to like do it all and then jump in. They look at it's all done. This is like zero point one, right? It's the super beginning of this, right? What works? Yeah. What doesn't work? You know, we have like simple hello <laughs> world working, uh, but you know. There's, there are a number of things still to be done, you know, about exception handling. And but I can build it, though. Yeah, you saying. can build it, and uh, you, you, you should be able to run the hell of well, What's cool, Scott, is if you look in the source code, you'll be able to see as they start adding support for Linux to it, that that that, that code changes are in, in the runtime already, so you can see them in there That's cool. where they worked on them. So and I'm going to be able to fire up my Ubuntu and just sit there and watch their repo and get fetch and build it and watch as they are building it. I don't think it builds, but uh, this is a build. He says you can't watch it. Builds. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to a repo, to be page, clear, oh, I want to just awesome. make sure my boss is not. Builds and runs. Right. Hello That's, world. But not ASP.NET. Yeah. Oh, I know. Like, yeah. 
we, 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 we need more of the framework than Hello World needs. But Hello World, though. That's still amazing. That's, that's Hello World Linux from Microsoft. Yeah, how can man. I find out, like, is there a roadmap or a status, or how can I find out, like, what's known to work and not known to work? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, one is that, uh, you know, we're using our blog quite a bit for that, and we usually um, uh, use Twitter as a broadcast mechanism for that. Uh, that said, uh, we have been looking at better kind of roadmap-y type things that we can put in there. We actually did do a roadmap for CoreFX. We haven't done one for CLR yet, um, just because we just basically landed the plane today. Right. But, um, yeah, we're thinking about doing that. We don't know exactly what shape yeah. it would take. Cool. You, you know, we, we hope to move as much development as possible to be kind of the first class GitHub. Mm -hmm. uh, to be first cast on the GitHub, and you know the cross-platform Linux part is is pretty good fit for that. So I would expect that we will like move like the bug tracking and the work item tracking over to the GitHub, so that people can see what needs to be done and right. you know. And it also takes some, so you don't get duplicate requests over and over for yeah. people. Hey, this doesn't work. Hey, this doesn't work. Yeah. Hey, yes, we know. You know. So, cool. um. You know, see I, some demos here. Yeah, let's totally yeah. see some demos. And with all due respect, this is super interesting, but he's typing, and I want to see what he's typing. Yeah. <laughs> is that cool? All so right. On Twitter, they said they can hear us pretty well. Even I don't know. This is kind of like it's a, it's a, it's the Klingon phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. If, if they tell me to stop, I'll stop. Now, if I switch over to you, yes. can they still hear us? Yes, I think they can. I don't think so. All right, cool. So this is your machine. Yes, this is my machine, and uh, <clears throat> this is the clone of the fork I had. Uh, this is what the core CLR repository looks like. So the sources are there, tests are there. You would see a binaries folder. That is something that gets built as part of uh, uh, building the runtime. You can navigate into source, and you can see uh, there's the assembly binder, GC, uh, the JET, MS Core Lab. Uh, we were talking about Linux. Uh, for Linux, we actually build a PAL, which abstracts the uh, runtime from the actual OS implementation. Uh, what is a PAL? Yeah, the platform adaptation layer. OK. So those are the PAL folders, which help enable that. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a look at uh, things like type system or assembly loader binder, you can take a look at uh, the VM folder, like or how EH works. Like, there are thousands of. I'm not telling a bunch of times that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, and you see, I see you have a build.sh there. Uh, yes, that's for the Linux build. There's a build.cmd too for the Windows build. So, uh, as of now, we have actually uh, our repo allows you to build uh, Windows uh, x64 debug and release configurations of the uh, runtime and MS Core Lab. So you can use it to debug and do a bunch of things. Um, is there a x86 version? Uh, we are working on it. Getting to other platforms and architectures is on core is, is something that we're working on. So x64 out. is kind of like the gold standard, and then you yeah. go from there. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, we have like all the. Uh, if you look at the architecture specific files, we actually have all the x86, yeah. and you know even yeah. ARM files in that. Yeah. We just didn't have it hooked up to make it build cleanly. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so effectively, uh, what we do is uh, we have a pretty, I already issued a build command, which actually uh, I'll actually show. Uh, and How long did it take? So the build uh, takes about uh, 17 to 20 minutes. Hmm. Uh, actually, I'll, let me rephrase. It will, depending on your machine, it will go from 12 minutes to 20 minutes. Really? It's a yeah. big deal. Yeah. Uh, we built a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot yeah. going on. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, however, the interesting... And it's not like the C-sharp compiler. No, like it's... C++ yeah. C++ optimizing compiler. Yeah. Right, so, right. So, uh, to... As well. to yes, uh, yes, just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is pointing out. <laughs> we are we're talking about low-level yes. stuff here. So, uh, the, the build.cmd actually uh, starts the build. Uh, the details are actually on the dev guide. Folks can go and look at the repo for the details. But in principle, right now, we require you to have VS2013 installed. And we require you to install uh, an open source tool called CMake, which is basically uh, a technology to build uh, platform independent uh, build files. And then you can actually uh, 
what our build system does is basically build.cmd calls into CMake and says, uh, go process uh, your files and generate a platform specific build solution for me. And that results in, uh, if you look into the CMake window, there is like a Visual Studio solution creator. So you can oh, see. Oh, so you a, make the solution from yes, CMake? Yes. Yes. So basically, uh, cool. I, can, I can show it to you like in sources. You can actually see there's a file called CMake.list. Mm -hmm. And you can actually. Oh, this is the uh, stuff to include. These are the directories to yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nice. So this is so you describe it, describe the build system in terms of CMake, and then you call CMake to process these files, and then tell uh, CMake knows what platform it is on, so it will go ahead and build. Uh, in case of this Visual Studio, it's, it's going to produce a VC++ solution. So all our projects that we are building actually come, become a C++ solution here. And uh, then it goes and builds. Uh, we invoke MS Build to go build it. And once that's done, we actually go ahead and build MS Core Lab. And then uh, the repo also results in, uh, actually, I'll show them here again. Mm -hmm. The repo ends up also producing, um, uh, so the product is produced. You can see it goes into x64, debugger release. And you can see the binaries are produced out here. Core CLR, MS Core DAC Core, DBI, and so on. Uh, you can see there is uh, MS Core Lab, and the PDBs are moved in here. Uh, the build also produces a NuGet package that comprises all this, uh, which is present here. Um, then we also produce the tests that you can build and then run as part of the uh, as part of your validation infrastructure. And what kind of test runner system is it? Um, we use uh, XUnit. Validating the runtime is uh, uh, unlike, say, a high-level framework, which can run against a well-established runtime, like a desktop runtime or a well-known version of CoreCLR or ASP.NET. We are here. We are building the runtime, and we want to validate it. So we basically uh, have a custom uh, test system. When we build a test, our tests actually end up producing some uh, batch files. And XUnit basically acts as a mechanism to invoke those batch files, which then uh, invoke the actual uh, core CLR host, the runtime host, the entity which starts the runtime and invokes the target managed code. Um, and that's where we actually get to use the modified runtime that you build and see, and if, of course, if there are issues. So is the XUnit that. runtime tester using its own? Person, its own private build of another? No, it's actually, uh, it's going to be running against the desktop runtime. The, oh, so the desktop runtime runs yeah. XUnit. The XUnit one then yeah. has the little child ones. Yeah. That way, problems with the, the, the build are isolated are to isolated. the child entity. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. What will we do uh, in Linux land where there is no desktop runtime? Uh, the current thinking is that we will use uh, XUnit as uh, it is supported right now, which is using Mono. Okay. And uh, but we are also working uh, on seeing the, how we can bring up the feature set for XUnit to be supported against CoreCLR itself, so that when we have a uh, LKG version of CoreCLR, we could actually run XUnit against it. Okay, yeah, LKG, last known good. Yeah, yeah. like a good, yeah, a good stable release. Baseline, yeah, stable release. Baseline, yeah, stable yeah, release. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you build a couple of builds ahead, yeah. declare that the last known good, and yeah, then you yeah. hand over hand your yeah, way there. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. hot. That's hot. Yeah, but it could basically, the, the more meta things, it could just have its own private version that is just. Absolutely. The, yeah, would, yeah. the last known good would become the yeah, private version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah cool. Absolutely. Yeah, we're all on the same page. Um, if anyone has any questions on Twitter or within the Q&A application within Google Hangouts, uh, check that out. And then if you have questions afterwards when this shows up on YouTube, we'll try to answer those questions to the best of our abilities. Anything in particular uh, coming up, John Galloway? No questions yet. No? Let's see. Give them a five seconds or so because they usually uh, wait a little bit. Otherwise, we'll call it. That's pretty cool. Um, you don't have like an Ubuntu VM lying around. Right? <laughs> no, I, I don't. But uh, I definitely want to share out some and demonstrate some differences because uh, uh, so typically uh, apps which run uh, whenever course the typical use case for core CLR mm -hmm. is that um, 
if you step back, uh, manage app against the uh, desktop.net framework as it is uh, executed today. Mm -hmm. The way it executes is, is basically uh, when uh, it is invoked, the operating system loader detects that it's managed, mm -hmm. and it actually calls into special entry points in the desktop uh, CLR shim libraries mm -hmm. and tell that, hey, I need to execute this thing. So the shim libraries are responsible for uh, loading the runtime, loading CLR or DLL, and starting the runtime, and then asking the runtime to go ahead and execute it. Right. Um, so there's a, def a good default experience here. However, with core CLR, uh, the goal was to have a managed runtime that can be customized for any kind of scenario. So you can actually have one runtime um, which could be used to run five different apps, and those apps all could have their own respective dependencies, like own uh, app configurations, for instance. Uh, they can be carrying their own framework level libraries as well. One could carry XML, the other may not carry XML, and so on. So um, in such cases, uh, we there is no direct way to invoke the runtime, but you rather actually have to write a native uh, host, which is responsible for activating the runtime. Uh, the host's job is to uh, is is very simple. Uh, start the runtime and tell it which is the managed exe to be invoked. So, like here, we actually build one such host as part of our build. It's called Core Run. In fact, this is the, uh, when I was telling you that uh, XUnit Runner actually invokes a batch file. Right. So in that batch file, there is a command similar to what's on the screen, which says core run followed by path to the test. So what core run does is basically, as I'll just uh, run this here, there's a hello world.exe. Core run actually loads core CLR, which it expects to be living next to it, mm -hmm. and says that, OK, Here's the exe that I want to execute. Go execute it. And uh, this is how uh, the runtime is actually uh, brought up. So you can actually go ahead and customize the startup. This is just like when I type Python or Ruby or Go or something Java like that. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so like here you can see I'm looking at, uh, actually, this is a good thing. So. Uh, I was talking about the core CLR solution, which is built as part of the build here, which is uh, right here as part yeah. of the build. Sure. So you can actually open it within VS, and you can use uh, C++ IntelliSense and all other VS goodies to go navigate the core. So like here, for instance, you can go ahead and take a look at corerun.cpp. And... Uh, if we were to just zoom in on this. that with your uh, little 100 percent there in the lower left corner, uh, yes, good idea. Is this better? Yes, sir. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, I can take through a brief walkthrough. Is uh, where's your main? Here's the main. So the main basically does argument parsing, but effectively. It extracts the name of the file that needs to be executed, and it passes it here. And uh, the try run method out here is responsible for doing a bunch of things, which includes uh, like uh, starting the runtime, like loading the runtime, getting the right entry point interfaces, and uh, like you can see, it does the low library here, figures out the name of the assembly that needs to be executed, sets certain properties. You can see these are the app paths I was talking about. Like right. if different apps have different uh, locations where they're storing different uh, framework assemblies, BN, 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 exactly all those things. So here, then it gets the um, interface that is responsible for starting the runtime, sets various startup flags, uh, does some bookkeeping, and basically says start the runtime. And once the runtime is started, you explicitly go and uh, initialize the app domain here. With various properties which correspond to the app paths and so on, mm -hmm. and that's what is it. That's how it runs. So, like, uh, basically, with core CLR, you get complete control over the kind of uh, uh, customization you want with respect to where the runtime will go, looking for dependencies and how things are going to work. Mm -hmm. This is, for instance, what Windows Phone uses when you start a phone app, a managed phone app. Uh, then uh, there's a host there which 
activates the core CLR mm -hmm. and tells core CLR, okay, for this app, you need to go look for dependencies in this location. Well, for this app, you need to go look for dependencies in another. And it's not just dependencies; it's also like you know performance tuning. Exactly. So basically, like the same core CLR is used all the way from phones to you know the web servers. Right. And you know the basically the host is basically what's used to configure it for each particular. Server. Should what about people who might look at this who maybe aren't necessarily the most uh, advanced people, or maybe someone who's more customer focused who says. This makes me sad. You mean I can't have a hello world.exe that's self-contained anymore? Is that really just an administrative detail? It's an administrative detail, and we are uh, working on a uh, experience that will make that much better, much simpler. Which uh, we can actually I mean, more Python details. and Java and Java and Go, they don't worry about that kind of stuff. And ultimately, I can still have a link and start menu that points to the thing that runs everything. Uh, so we have this little prototype that we've been working on. Um, that uh, what? Uh, okay. It doesn't um, matter if you look there or not. Okay. Yeah, we have they're all looking at okay. his idea. Yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have this prototype that we've been working on, which um, basically has the same runner concept, mm -hmm. except it renames the runner to like Scott Hanselman Oh, and then okay. buries your ho your thing that you're uh, makes the host the name. Yeah, and then yeah, um, it basically clear. has a convention yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Um, there's still a separate DLL, which would be the Scott Hanson main DLL, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and there's a convent. Yeah. Well, it has to, with this prototype, they have to be the same name except .dot .exe oh, and .dot .dll. That's a good idea. So there's a convention on which one to go grab, to, which is actually your app. Right, right. But so it, it gives the same experience. I see. So your app .dot .exe becomes your app .dot .dll. The runner gets the name. You double click, yeah, yeah. it finds yeah. it. That's a really good idea. So you don't have to worry about anything for common. Because cases. the convention is that I'm an enthusiast. I open yeah. up a folder. I yes. see it, and I go, Oh, I'm going to double click on that. Yep. And it just works. Yeah. Um, that's absolutely. a really good idea. Uh, another thing that we're playing with is the idea of having a fully self-contained single file. Yeah, yeah I'll merge the whole thing. Yeah, and then, uh, well, one option is the I'll merge thing. Another one is um, it could basically have um, almost like a self-extracting thing. Like basically, resource. the first time it runs, buried in a resource. It, it, uh, it pushes all the stuff out yeah. and then subsequently just runs. Uh, uh, from those files that have been extracted out, yeah. but the idea is you would just have one file that you would have to that you'd be able to x copy anywhere that you wanted. Do you think people really want that, or do you do you look are you looking for feedback? Do you? Yeah, do we are looking yeah. for feedback actually. Okay. Like how badly do you guys, you all, and the who are listening care? The file extension. Can it they don't really care. XAP. No, <laughs> no, no, we were not. What, you, what is wrong with you? Path, no, no. Um, but I mean, I think that, that that's the point, though. You're typing core run. This is not an unfamiliar thing for yeah. most people. I think that we've been a little bit spoiled with the .NET full framework with the way that the loader works over the last few years. Do we want to continue to be spoiled? Yes, that's, yes. A, good that's, that's a good question. That's question. the question. Yeah. So that'd be an interesting thing for people to put in the comments, and we can go back and explore that later. Just one other question. I mean, we've, we've got you all here. Nerdy people are like me are going to want to go and look at the code and look for fun, exciting code, right? And on Hacker News, I've seen people digging into like the string class. Yes. And they're like, hey, there's some cool code here. And <laughs> like, is there any like you guys have been working on this code for years? Is there any cool code you're excited that people can go look at? Or a class you think people are like yeah. we're going to explore one thing today? Um, look at this class. You know, like there are like lots of kind of interesting implementation details in the. Um, in the framework, but they have been like on the reference source for a while already. True. Right? Or a reflector you know, or whatever. Like but but the, the brand new code that was never ever released before and what we pushed out today is the JIT and G C. So if you're uh, a student, a computer science student, that's yeah. where you should be spending your time. Uh, yeah. So uh, for for G C we have actually like small sample in there that you know just initialize the G C and you know lets you kind of experiment it with experiment with it. Without the rest of the runtime, that's kind of interesting uh, project to look at. When uh, if you just want to understand how the GC works, and where is that sample uh, located? Sure, sure. uh, or is sort of dot .NET Core CLR? Yeah. yeah. Slash you're Core almost, CLR. You're almost there. Yeah. Well, let me let's do that. So there's you, and now we'll share my screen. Control. I'm taking over, people. No. So I go in here. Uh, yeah. Core CLR. Core CLR. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, source uh, GC. And under there is sample. Mm -hmm. And you know, 
there is like little uh, Visual Studio project that you can open. All right. And so, oh, you have lots of nice comments like, to explain it. Uh, this is basically just like you know, very simple example of how to initialize the GC and uh, uh, you know how to allocate objects. All right, um, cool. That's nice that you did that. Yeah. Yohan is a nice guy. <laughs> 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 he did it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's thoughtful, though, because yeah. this is the stuff where um, people are going to be, you know, students are going to want to look at that. Yeah. And, you know, we also expect that, you know, the uh, people who kind of want to mix and match, say, mono with, uh, with core CLR or do similar kind of projects, they probably won't be interested in taking the whole thing, right? So it's like too big. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of the GC is an uh, interesting subsystem that you can just take and you know, try to integrate it with more, or maybe, oh. you know, or maybe there are actually other runtimes out there that we are, you know, playing with. And the last question I have, because we are almost out of time here, is that are you all, like, do you talk regularly with the mono folks? Because you've got, there's a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting questions coming up about, you know, like, they're, they can use the jitter and they can use the GC, but they have some really cool libraries that are cross-platform that already work great. You know, are you, is that just being figured out as we go? So I got an email from Miguel at 502. Oh, there's so, an email from yeah. Miguel. <laughs> so, I wish we could share the screen, but there it is. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I'm, I'm trying to get the bill to work, and yeah, now you're looking them up. Well, I think the, the salient part is, hey, guys, congratulations on the release of the core CLR. That's nice. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a nice guy, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to text you. Call me. <laughs> All right, cool. Congratulations, everybody. That's really exciting. Thank you. All right, more big stuff uh, happening in the .NET world, uh, and check us out on YouTube. We've got community standups and all sorts of stuff. We actually have two questions. Yeah, should we should, we, should we? They're not really pertinent questions okay. to what we're talking about here. Cool. Okay. So we'll try to follow up with those questions in the comments on YouTube. Great. That sounds all right. Thanks, everybody.